Hey fans, welcome back to Penn Central 99's channel. On this session, we're going to do a product review. And that product is the newly released Atherin Genesis HO scale with DCC and sound, ST70 ACE, Norfolk Southern Series, the Penn Central Heritage Scheme. But before we get started with the product review, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the delivery. And now, let's take a look at the unboxing. Well, let's see, what do we have here? Oh, this is the, uh, the pre-ordered Ather and Genesis Norfolk Southern Penn Central Heritage Series HO scale SD70 ACE with DCC and sound. I ordered this oh, about a year ago. It was supposed to be delivered until February of next year. But it appears that Atherin is a little bit ahead of schedule, which is okay by me. Uh, let's open this up and we'll take a look at it. Well, there it is. Like I said, the uh, Norfolk Southern Penn Central Heritage Scheme uh, SD70 ACE with DCC and sound. Okay, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with the product review. Let's take a look at the packaging. Ather and ships their uh, Genesis products in a cardboard box, and the packaging itself for the item is pretty good. The only thing you need to watch out for is the lid is not secure to the bottom part. It's not taped like some of the other uh, packaging material is. So when you pull it out of the cardboard, you need to be careful because it's not secure. Uh, but as you can see uh, in the the box, you've got the, your owner's or instruction manual, which comes in handy, especially with DCC and Tsunami Sound. It's got some uh, product registration form, one of their uh, flyers as far as their products. This is the, uh, the packing slip that was in the box from FedEx, but you can see that the item is pretty well protected in a foam material. It's also got uh, foam inside of the box which that is secured in there so in order to get the item out all you need to do is just pull that out of the foam packaging and it comes in a little plastic case that plastic case is inside of a plastic sleeve which you just need to slide out of there and set that aside now what you need to be careful is this is secured I know Bachman uh, packages uh, their locomotives like this I don't own any Kados or any uh, Intermountain or MTHs, so I can't speak for them. But uh, Atherin has now started to uh, package their products with this uh, sleeve. And in order to get this apart, you might as well just get rid of this styrofoam. It helps take up the space. But you see this portion of this corner here? You just need to peel that up. And what it does is it opens up that whole package, and then you can get the product out. The product also has some more foam material on each side uh, between the body shell and the handrail so that they don't bend. And what I do is I usually just take a uh, toothpick or you can even use a safety pin or something and just uh, stick that in there and pull that out of there. Now handling the locomotive, you just need to be a little bit careful. I'm not saying you should baby it, I'm not saying you should treat it like it's an eggshell. But at the same token, Atherin has put a lot of details into these Genesis models, especially the uh, Norfolk Southern uh, Heritage Scheme. So just be a little bit careful. You don't want to grab it by the handrails. There's a lot of finely detailed parts, like the, uh, the sand hoses in front of the wheels, the handrail for the front and the rear. So just be careful while you're uh, handling it. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this in the middle here and pull it out of the... It's a nice center spot, a nice secure spot. So just pull it out of there and we're going to set this down. Okay, for our next trick, I'm going to get a uh, photo or image that I have of the prototype. And we're just going to set it here and use that for comparison.
And as you can see here, I've got a picture of the prototype in the actual model itself. And as you can tell, I think Atherin did a great job on the prototype. I'm just going to use some of the packing foam to help tilt this up a little bit so I don't have to hold it at an angle while we're talking about stuff. But you can see here from the prototype, first of all, it's the paint scheme. Obviously, black and white, there's not much that you can uh, and do as far as enhancing that detailing. But you can see here the Penn Central logo, Penn Central uh, scheme, the locomotive number, the white stripe at the base of the walkway, and another paying attention to detail or a fine thing is you see all the images, the labels on the compartments or the doors down the side of the locomotive. Atherton has matched one for one, and you can see here where they've added those details. The uh, top of the locomotive, of course, we've got the horn here, which is just like on the prototype. The radiator um, grills or the fans, which you can't see in the picture, but if you take a look here on the model, is these are see-through. I can see down to the inside of the shell or the body, So, and the fan blades themselves are painted silver. So I think Ather did a pretty good job with detailing that. The front of the locomotive, You can see from the prototype, we've got the yellow painted handrails. We have the Penn Central logo PC on the, the nose there. The, the headlights are prototypically correct. If you look on the, um, the prototype, they're up high on the cab, which they are here. The ditch lights are mounted down on the walkway on the front, which they are here. Uh, this thing and other with the details on these Genesis models has got the uh, the coupler hoses and other fine details on the front. Uh, this coupler <laughs> is plastic. You know, it's what Atherin uses. I'm going to change that out to a KD. And if you notice how short that is uh, past the, uh, the the snow plow or the blade on the front there, there's not a lot of room there. So I'm just going to put a, a long shank KD coupler on there. The same thing on the rear because if you notice it doesn't stick out too far. Uh, doing the rear details, uh, the same thing, we have uh, prototypically correct lights along with the ditch lights. They do operate once we energize this or provide power to it, you'll see that. But I think overall, Atherin did a great job on the details for this. And you can see, just by looking at it, it's prototypically correct. It has some visors on the side and also, I don't know if you can see in the picture here, there's a little side view mirror on the engineer side of the locomotive which they installed here on this model and it's located right there. Okay, before we move on, I guess I should get my terminology correct. Um, I was wrong. These are not coupler hoses, as you all know. These are MU hoses, but like I said, Atherin uh, did a great job of paying attention to detail and they're, you can see them, they're there. And they're on the back also. Uh, so I apologize for the uh, incorrect terminology, but they are MU hoses and they are there. Another thing, uh, this grill here is also see-through on the very back of the locomotive. They uh, did a better job on details, especially up here by the fuel tank. You know, here we have the, uh, the cap for the fuel tank. They painted it red. Um, other fine details that you can see on the front here. The chain that goes in between. The handrails is painted silver, so you don't have to do that. But like I say, I think overall Atherin did a great job on detailing these. Now let's go ahead and take it apart and uh, we'll look at the inside. One of the other nice things that Atherin does on their models, especially these uh, the Genesis, uh, you can pull the, the roof off of the cab because it's only held down by a magnet. So simple magnets that holds that roof down. And what that does is that gives you a nice detail of the cab and you can see they've got the engineer seat, the conductor seat, uh, all the controls for the interior plus it gives you easy access for the, uh, the headlights in case you want to modify or change them. But that's another nice little feature uh, that Atherin incorporates. Right, this is the part you see I went and got one of my foam cradles out. Uh, according to Atherin in the instruction there's four screws underneath here that need to be taken out. Uh, the screws are 
there's the coupler boxes the two screws need to be taken out plus there's two screws that are up here by the fuel tank they're probably in underneath there the, the front and rear trucks I can see that yeah I can see both of them that need to be taken out so we can get the shell off so I'm going to go ahead and remove those and then we'll come back and I'll uh, take the shell off once you get the four screws removed uh, it's very easy to take the shell off of the body you just need to be careful because all the wires are still attached underneath there and it's just going to take a little, little bit of gentle um, moving here to take the shell off of the, uh, the frame. Now another thing you need to be careful is I took this apart before I turned the camera on because you never know what's going to happen. Um, what happened to me is when they glued the the horn I guess on top of the shell on the inside here some of the glue the hot glue or melted glue got on the wires so when I tried to pull it apart the wires were stuck inside of there and what you don't want to do is you don't want to be forceful because you're going to end up breaking stuff and ripping stuff apart and you can see how small and delicate these things are uh, now that we have the shell off you can see here's the, the sound decoder and this is a tsunami a soundtrack tsunami sound decoder mounted right here on the top you can see all the wires uh, the speaker is located here in the front and one thing I was disappointed in the instructions in the box is hey, Athern did not specify the type or the style of speaker so if you had to replace it um, you don't know what it is but you have to take it apart to replace it anyway but it would be nice to know what's underneath the shell without digging it apart but you can see the speaker here the uh, the decoder the, the motor front and rear uh, trucks the drive mechanisms um, but it's very nicely done another nice thing about this um, it's clean there's a lot of wires here because we got headlight rear light we got dish lights front and back so there are six things that need power right there uh, so you know plus wires for the speaker wires for the motor so actually there's a lot of stuff underneath here but as you can see it's very nicely done very nicely taken care of and it looks pretty good okay as we talked I'm putting this back together I've already got the two screws in by the fuel tank to hold the uh, the body onto the shell now I'm going to put the uh, the coupler boxes and the couplings back on but what I'm going to do is and I don't know if you can see this or not I'm going to use uh, KD number 26 is which these are long center shank um, couplers and as you noted earlier the other ones are awfully close to the body so I'm just going to put these on to give it a little bit more room especially when it's swinging on the uh, the curves and stuff now I've already run this on the layout and it has no problem uh, taking my 22 inch curve so I'm just going to give it a little bit extra room but what I'm using is a KD number 26 as you see I've got the shell back on the frame I've got it on the track so we're going to go ahead and apply power now and go through some of the um, the startup sequences and the sounds because that's why we buy DCC with sounds we want to hear stuff um, for those of you that aren't aware I use a Digitrax Zephyr Express for my command station uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, fire it up and uh, run through some of the sequences Ship from the factory, uh, it's preset for 03, that's pretty standard for most manufacturers, they're all manufactured with uh, decoders, um, so as you can see I've already got 03 programmed in here. Well that's the sound of an SD78 uh, startup. The only thing is, uh, man, that's awful loud. So one of the first things I'm going to program when I go through the uh, CV programming after this uh, product review is turn the volume down. Because, man, that is way loud. So anyway, um, turn on the headlights is F0. Okay, even though it's got dish lights, you still have to turn them on. Uh, so F5 is for the dish lights. F1 is the bell. F2 is the longhorn. And you can see that the ditch lights are already preset uh, in the wigwag or the alternating motion. And uh, that is the Norfolk Southern uh, Railroad standard for their line. In case you missed it, the 
It does not do that on F3, the short horn. Forward. Of course, the CVs for starting and stopping are not programmed yet, so that's preset. Reverse. So everything seems to function a little bit. Seems to be pretty nice so far. The only thing is the, um, the sound, which is awful loud. I'm going to go ahead and turn the loco around so you can get a look and see what the rear dish lights look like. I've got the loco turned around so you can see what the rear lights look like. So when I switch from forward to reverse, you see the rear light and rear dish lights come on. Uh, the only thing that it's not programmed for when you hit the long horn, notice that the dish lights do not alternate, wig wag, or you know, switch like they do in the front. I don't know if the rear dish lights can be programmed to wigwag or alternate, but there's what uh, the rear looks like. As you can see, I've already got some motion going on, so that looks pretty good. Here's a different angle and a little bit better close-up so you can see the, uh, the front dish lights. So like I say, this will all come apart when I do the CD program. I'm just not going to do it in this session. Well, that pretty much does it for this product review. Overall, I think Athern did a great job on uh, modeling the uh, prototype, uh, especially this HO scale locomotive. Um, they have um, increased their detailing um, and their marketing of their products. But like I said, overall, I think Athern did a pretty good job. So hopefully, uh, you'll like this product review and maybe it can help you and benefit you and teach you some of the things about it But for the most part, that's pretty much it for this session. And as always, thanks for watching